Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. This is part two in my series of sharing my sewing machines. And today I'm going to be talking about my Singer Featherweight machine. I inherited this machine from my great aunt when she passed away in 2019. And I recently got it fixed up. I was a little nervous to get started sewing with it. Um, so I put it off until I got it refurbished. The shop that I took it to replaced the pads on the bottom and the belt and tuned it up and made sure all the tension and everything was good. Um, and now I've really been enjoying using it. So this machine only sews a straight stitch. And I had the good fortune of being able to talk to my great aunt about this machine. And I know that she really loved it. And she was a big garment sewist. And this is the only machine that she had. So the one big issue of having only a straight stitch when you are sewing garments is that you don't have a zigzag. Literally, the needle cannot go to the left and right. It only goes straight. So for so she could not do a zigzag stitch to um, finish the edge of the fabric and she couldn't sew a buttonhole by machine. Um, so, <laughs> which I kind of feel like is a deal breaker. I really like to have those features in my sewing machine for sewing garments and it's something I'm really used to, but she was used to this and sewed many, many garments just using this machine. So when she had to do a zigzag, she would hand stitch an overcast stitch along the edge of the fabric. And for her buttonholes, she would do a hand buttonhole or a bound buttonhole, which I just thought was the most impressive thing I've ever heard. <laughs> bound buttonholes are definitely an expert level kind of skill and not something that I have done before. So I was really impressed with how many beautiful garments she made with this machine. And now I'm really glad that I'm able to have it as part of my arsenal of sewing and I've been using it for piecing. And I know that this is a really popular machine with quilters for piecing their fabric together. So I got this machine back, I think in January and over the last few months, I have been piecing this quilt. Um, it is now covered in cat hair because we've been using it ever since I finished it. And I just loved sewing with this for the piecing. It's just so smooth. And the sound of the machine is really soothing. Like there are no beeps or things that you get from a computerized machine. The only sound is really the sound of the needle and um, the machinery, the belt. So it's really beautiful and soothing. And I'm gonna put some video in so that you can hear it yourself. So the only drawback about using this machine is that I don't really have space for it. Behind me, I have my desk where I would usually have my big machine, my like regular um, machine that I use to sew everything and then my serger. So I've had to move that big machine out of the way to bring this one in. And it's just a little tricky moving machines in and out. Um, I would love to have a space or a desk that was big enough. I guess I do have room right here, <laughs> but I'd love to have a little bit more desk space so that I could have all three machines out at the same time. That said, this guy does have a really nice carrying case so I can put it away and store it when I'm not using it. Um, but when I have a big sewing project like this, you know, I would just have it out all the time and be using it a lot. So it was a little tricky to go back and forth between my garment sewing, which I want to do on my regular machine and the quilting. Um, Cause normally I could just use the same one, but I love using this machine. Um, it's just been a delight and I love being able to use it and think about how my great aunt Miriam loved using it. And I hope that she's appreciating that I'm continuing to use it and making things with it. So the Singer Featherweight comes in this handy little carrying case and it's not super light, but it is very portable. And I think probably for back in the day, it was very light. And I believe they started making these machines in the 1930s. So, oh, all right. <laughs> 
I dated this one to 1951 by looking at the serial number on the bottom of the machine. So as you can see, it's very compact. It comes with a pedal that stores right up in the top of the box. And this is the button that um, controls the needle. And I don't really know what this one is for. Um, I've used another old singer from the 50s or 60s, and it had a similar pedal. And that pedal was designed to go into a table. So I suspect maybe that's part of this design, um, but I'm not really sure. So let me see. So when you take it out, you plug this into this side and obviously put this on the ground and then you're just ready to go. Um, the funny thing about this machine, which is unlike other machines that I've used, is the light doesn't have to be on to use the machine. So all this time I was like, thought I was turning and turning off the machine by flipping the switch, but all I was doing was turning off and on the light. Um, so <laughs> that's one thing I learned about this recently, um, was that you can have the light on or off. So here are some additional things that came in the box. We have this original oil can, which I think is just adorable. And there's even a little slot in the box that the oil can fits perfectly into. And then here's a little um, envelope with needles in it. You might have to try those out. And then here's the box with a bunch of accessories. And I don't know what all of these feet do. I would have to look it up, um, but there are some useful ones. I think this is for bias binding. Um, this one is probably a zipper foot. There's a rolled hem foot and some bobbins. And then this box just fits right in to the carrying case. Okay, let's take a look at how this guy works. So you plug it in right here and I have my pedal on the floor. Then if you wanna turn on the light and the light bulb's right under here, you flip this switch. This is not an on off switch though, as I originally assumed. So you can stitch even with the light off. I think the big benefit of having the light off is if you're gonna take pictures of while you're sewing, it looks better with the lighting to have the light off. Um, so this is the wheel just as like with every other machine, it moves the needle up and down. There's a belt right here that's exposed. Um, and then here's where you put your thread. So one thing that I had read is that um, you it doesn't work as well to run certain kinds of thread in this upright position. So normally I would use this kind of thread, but I don't have the converter yet to use this kind of spool. So I'm using this kind of more regular kind. So usually when I'm quilting, I use these big um, quilting cotton reels, but I'm getting an attachment that will convert um, this little guy so that I can use this spool that works better when it's placed horizontally. Anyway, that's kind of a detail that I learned. Very interesting. It's not something that I had thought about before, but I thought it would be interesting to show you how to wind the bobbin and thread the machine. Obviously, this machine's kind of new to me, so I don't have a ton of experience with it, but I did watch some videos and it was pretty easy. And I think partly that's because um, I've used a singer before. My mom has one, um, so it, it all felt kind of familiar. Let's do a bobbin first. So we use these metal bobbins and just go down here like this and you put the bobbin on here. And then there's a little inside wheel here and we loosen that to turn off our needle. And then bring the thread down around here. And then through our bobbin and then we push this knob down so that the wheel here connects with the wheel of the machine and just use the foot pedal and then our bobbin case let's see let's undo this lift this up and tighten a little knob here now I'm try to turn this around. Our bobbin case is down on this side and 
you just lift it out. It's a little different because it's exposed. You know, I feel like more modern machines cover up a lot of these mechanics. So just another spool of white thread and you just put your bobbin in the case. I think I'm doing this correctly. <laughs> and then slide it in. There are lots of other videos that are really specifically about how to thread um, the machine and how to wind your bobbin, but I'm obviously not an expert because this machine is pretty new to me, but this is the process I've been doing. So then this is pretty similar to other machines. You bring it up through, I think it's a tension knob, um, through this little lever. I'm sorry, I don't know all the technical names. And through a bunch of hooks. And then one thing that's really different about this machine is that the eye of the needle um, is facing this way instead of this way. So you actually thread from the inside out. There we go. Okay, and then let's draw our bobbin thread up. Okay, now we have both of our threads and this is the only thing that determines the stitch. So as I was saying, there's only a straight stitch. And when this lever is down, you're going to move forward. When it's up, you're going to go backwards. And then how far you move it down will determine the length of your stitch. So you can loosen or tighten this little knob to adjust the position of the lever and how um, short or long those stitches are going to be. So let's do it right about there. Um, I'm not too picky with this. And let's stitch a little bit. Okay, and then we go forward again. And I love the sound of the stitching. You can hear all the mechanics worrying and the little dinging is just the spool of thread on the pin here. Okay, and then let's do back stitch just to show it again. And of course, it's all manual. You have to lift the presser part with your hand. No big deal. And they're really just beautiful stitches.
If you are interested in getting your own featherweight machine, there are a lot online. Um, there's one website in particular that's been really helpful for me, just learning how to use the machine, how to thread it, how to wind the bobbin. Um, and I will put a link to that down in the show notes. So I did a little bit of research on pricing for these machines. Um, after my great aunt passed away, my dad was just going to give this to Goodwill. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going to take that home. You can't just give these to Goodwill. They're really special machines. So um, I looked it up. And I think at that time when I first Googled, it looked around $250. And I did a Google search today um, with 1951 because that's the year that this was made. And I found everything from like $125 up to $1,200. So the $125, um, they don't know if it works. It's not in great condition. It doesn't have a belt or a pedal. Um, it doesn't have the carrying case. And then the $1,200 version would have the carrying case, excellent condition, working order, all the parts and accessories. So a lot like this one. I'm very lucky to have this very good condition machine. Um, so there are lots available out there. I think this was just a really super popular machine for decades. So you could probably pretty easily find one online. Um, they also have other colors um, like white and green and I think pink. So there's a lot out there. Um, they're really beautiful and really just a joy to use. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you are looking to get a machine, I have a video with tips on how to shop for a machine and find the sewing machine that's gonna be the best for you and your needs. So I'll put a link to that here and down in the show notes. And if you missed part one in this series, make sure to check that out as well. If you would like to support the channel and this free content, I have links down in the show notes to buy me a coffee or visit the pattern shop. Happy sewing.